Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Crew and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. So, there's actually been quite a bit of discussion over the past year that PS5, PS5 sales have spiked in Japan, and they are overtaking the Switch, and the console is much more popular than it ever has been before, and the Switch is about to be replaced. It can't compete with the PS5. That was the narrative being pushed on us. For the past uh, for the past couple of months, and I looked into it. Like I was mostly focused on like the Switch angle of things. I was talking about how like uh, there haven't been any major releases on Switch in a while. How there's like all these things that that people weren't taking into account. Like the Switch is still doing very well for itself, essentially. And the thing is, I genuinely believe that PS5 to some extent was like doing well in Japan. I thought it was finally getting some traction. It had some like big games that I thought might have might have like spurred on some sales in the past couple of years. I thought that like we had reached the point where PS5 was becoming relevant and it was like becoming like uh, starting to like compete with the Switch. Like it actually got a little bit of momentum. And it wasn't going to last or anything like that. I uh, I made that very clear, but my view was that, like, yeah, we are in this phase where we can't expect, like, PS5 to get major releases in the next couple of years. Now, though, uh, now that I've looked into it a bit more, or specifically, I have looked into, like, the media create situation more, and, like, where these sales from Japan are actually coming from, I honestly feel like we, uh, I really should have pressed Square to doubt, like, X to doubt a, mo a lot more, right? This is... An example of just how weird this uh, the the propaganda for Sony can get in some regards because uh, the the gaming establishment really really wants Nintendo to fail and Sony to succeed but gamers uh, people who are actually like following along with this and actually paying attention to this they seem to have a tendency to like. Uh, kind of look into like some weird situations and come to some startling revelations. In this case, where exactly are these PS5s going? Like, why exactly are sales of PS5 spiking in Japan? What exactly is causing this? And it's not gameplay releases. It's not. It's not new hardware revisions. It's not bundles. It's. It's none of that. Like, what is driving PS5 sales in Japan? Are people scalping the consoles and selling them? in China, right? The PS5 version, uh, the, the, the Chinese version of the PS5 is heavily regulated in China. I believe like the Chinese have like some censorship policies in place. You, uh, It's region locked in some ways. Uh, not every game is available for it. So there is actually a very, very big demand in China for the PS5. And so what's happening is that Japanese scalpers are buying PS5s en masse and they're shipping them off to China, like as uh, through as independent sellers, essentially, and making a tidy profit. You know, the Chinese get their like region-free PS5 console with every with everything they would ever want, and uh, you know the Japanese make some some money off of that. And Sony, the media create sales, get an inflated sense of how popular the PS5 is in Japan. Remember, like we're not talking about like the Chinese sales here. We're talking about the Japanese sales charts, like the media create platform. We're talking about, like, comparing Japanese console sales to, like, the Chinese ones. So, so uh, the, the fact is that that figure we're seeing of, like, the PS5 selling uh, a metric uh, considerably more than they ever have in, in Japan, it's, it's, uh, it's taken out of context. It's not giving you the whole, the whole story. PS5 is simply a console that is heavily desired by, uh, by, by Chinese consumers – but is it really readily available in their country? They have to like go through these this process of having having the PS5 shipped to them by by independent sellers in Japan who have to like buy them uh, buy them in retail and stuff like that. It is uh, and of course China China is a much bigger country than Japan, so you have this like you have like all these places that the the PS5 can go. It's like they're essentially spread out over this like giant country, one of the big global superpowers right now. So. What we're seeing is <laughs> – so what we're seeing is an interesting situation, right? We have these scalpers. We have this situation of this PS5, like, on paper selling more than the Switch in Japan at the moment. But the reality is quite different. Like, the PS5 isn't being sold. It's being it's being scalped. It's being sold off, like, somewhere else uh, at, a, at a lower price than – 
uh, with more features than what they can expect in their home country. It's it's kind of like how I believe it's Brazil has a bunch of like regulations for like foreign products and it's difficult to get consoles there. Like it, it's the same kind of thing, right? People just get all their stuff illegally. This this is a good example of of just how of how the narrative is warped to suit PlayStation's purpose. The suit like the PlayStation agenda, the idea, the myth that that PlayStation is succeeded where Nintendo always fails. That is the typical game journalist take on the subject. And we are seeing that happen now with real t in real time. We all year long, we've seen this this push to like kind of downplay the Switch and like uh, ignore all the big games coming out for it. Games like Octopath Traveler 2, Fire Emblem Engage, uh, Kirby Return to Dreamland, Fatal Frame 4 is coming out soon. Advance Wars 1 and 2 is coming out in April. Tears of the Kingdom, like these are like these aren't small releases. These are really hype really high profile games that really have a dedicated cult following and yet there is somehow no enthusiasm to them yet meanwhile we're supposed to be excited for like the last of us hbo and i don't even know what's coming out on ps5 right now um what, what is even coming out on ps5 in the next couple of months like i think hogwarts legacy was it i think hogwarts legacy was the big game for the year honestly i, I can't think of anything else else in the future that's uh, you've ever going to match that uh like it, it's an interesting situation to be sure we are in a in a wild age uh <laughs> at the moment when it comes to uh, the console sales we are seeing like all this weird underhand all these weird underhanded tactics all these weird strategies and i don't think it's going to pan out very well i think more and more serious gamers are drifting primarily to nintendo consoles i i think there's a reason we always call like the PlayStation state of plays and the Xbox showings like uh, directs as opposed to, like by their actual names because Nintendo has kind of dominated the the online gaming sphere with their Nintendo Direct format with with their with their releases uh, with with their releases with their with their um, with their news cycle like Nintendo knows what they're doing and and more and more it feels like PlayStation and Xbox don't. They have no regard for gamers at all. They're unable, incapable of making good games. And all they've really ever been able to do is like uh, brainwash the uninformed that Nintendo was childish and, un uh, and repetitive as opposed to like Sony's cool and sophisticated adult gamers, you know, like uh, adult games for adult gamers, mature games for mature gamers, we used to call it. I... I um um I, I wonder when the narrative is going to collapse because I think we're we're kind of already at that point where uh, it reminds me of a decade ago when we realized that like PS3 was uh, they were bundling a bunch of games with consoles and that inflated Uncharted 3 sales and it inflated like uh, all all sorts of th there there were all sorts of things right there uh, back then right. In regards to like how Sony was like inflating their numbers, you know, uh, ship not sold was a uh, was a thing I noticed back in the day. Uh, it would ship units to retailers and then like consider those like sold units. That is, that is, uh, that is the PlayStation mindset, right? To cheat, to lie, to steal, to promote themselves as being the best, even though they've done absolutely nothing to deserve it. And this is a really good example of just how fake the PlayStation actually is.